Hi there, I'm Chris Hernandez. Welcome to the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. City employees raised more than $5,000 for charities during their annual combined charity campaign kickoff celebration at Islas Davis Park. Over the noon hours, employees stop by to enjoy lunch, games, karaoke, and a raffle with all proceeds benefiting charities. Following the kickoff, employees are encouraged to make donations through the charity campaign to charities of their choosing. We have a lot of fun doing this. I'm proud of us given the amount of issues this organization has worked through the last couple of years with the job cuts and the salary freezes and the, for this organization to continue to pull together and give to those who need our help uh, as valuable partners as we go forward. I can't think enough about the work that you do every day and the quality of the generosity that you show this time of year. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Fall is here with conventions, shopping for charity, my personal favorite, and a very popular Broadway show. From October 6th through 9th, Cerner's annual health conference will be at the Kansas City Convention Center. Each year, a wide variety of healthcare professionals travel from all over the globe to learn new topics in education sessions, network with peers, and explore the award-winning Solutions Gallery. The economic impact to Kansas City is $7.2 million, with an expected attendance of 3,000 health professionals. MOPS, mothers of preschoolers, hold their annual convention October 16th through 19th. MOPS International brings 4,000 attendees with an economic impact of $2.3 million. Backed by popular demand, winner of 35 major awards, including a Grammy and three Tony Awards, Wicked is Broadway's biggest blockbuster, a cultural phenomenon, and was named the defining musical of the decade by the New York Times. On October 9th, Broadway's biggest blockbuster flies back to Kansas City for a limited three-week engagement. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com or walk up at the Municipal Auditorium box office. Attend the 26th Annual Holiday Mart from October 17th to October 20th at Bartle Hall. Presented by the Junior League of Kansas City, Missouri, Holiday Mart is an upscale shopping extravaganza that for 26 years has become a fall tradition to many in the area and an extra special destination for those living within traveling distance. Each year, Holiday Mart features more than 220 specialty retailers and attracts more than 22,000 shoppers. Thanks to retailers, shoppers, and generous sponsors, proceeds from Holiday Mart support community projects sponsored by the League including its commitment to children's nutrition and fitness. Since it began in 1988, Holiday Mart has helped to raise more than $8 million for Kansas City community projects. Tickets can be purchased at www.jlkc.org. To learn about more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. You're kind-hearted. You want to do the right thing. When it comes to helping those less fortunate, there are times you doing an act of kindness may simply perpetuate a problem and make it worse. Watch this.
it really is more effective to give resources to agencies that are organized, coordinated, and work directly with folks than to hand it to them because one just doesn't know what one's supporting or where that money is actually going to end up. For all of us who receive support for helping the homeless in our community, uh, we're scrutinized uh, by any number of organizations, both private and public. And that's, I think, is what your impact is so much greater uh, going through that format. And there's so many, such a diversity of organizations out that you can pick that one that's working in the way in which, you know, you feel the most comfortable. Uh, and I think what folks don't understand is you really can be enabling people to stay in situations that are very dangerous to them, extremely dangerous to them, particularly to women, particularly to older individuals, and quite frankly, particularly to young people. And when I see a young person out in the street, and any of us who are encouraging that, we really are encouraging situations that we have no idea about, and that which have the, the most serious of ramifications. And a quarter, a dollar, five dollars, is not the solution. There are agencies that are out feeding the hungry every night of the week and they're out in vans so they go where folks are out in camps. What I see in uh, many emergency programs is quite frankly people are getting up to four or five meals. That, they're, that, that right now as opposed to being said you know why don't you get some help for your mental health issue? Why don't you get some help for substance abuse? Why don't you find housing? The, the, the entire day is caught up in moving from one free the service to another, be that just a bunk, be that uh, a food, but none of which is that sustaining uh, service that will lead someone to self-resiliency. And frankly, no one knows if an individual on the street holding a sign is what he or she represents themselves as being. We do know, quite frankly, that there is some trafficking involved, that there are individuals who take folks out, uh, drop them off at a spot, pick them up, and then get money from them, part of, kind of, part of the take. Uh, and whether those folks still are generally homeless and they're just sharing that money because they're getting the transportation to wealthier areas to get money, I don't know. But I also know that I see folks who are three, 300 yards from Restart, from City U Mission, from Hope Faith Ministries, who have their signs who are asking for things. And um, really, that is somebody who may or may not be homeless. I've seen them teaching young people to do that. Uh, and it is counterproductive and frankly it's dangerous for both parties. If you encourage people to come to you and take something from the car, you are then uh, giving kind of a, a commitment that anybody who hands you something from a car is going to be helpful as opposed to trying to hurt you. And quite frankly, for women, for members of the LGBT community, uh, for younger people, we're putting them at risk. There is one way to solve homelessness and it's being uh, verified throughout the nation and that is to get people into housing as quickly as possible. Um, so it is not to hand things out to them, it is not even to feed them, it's to get housing. And uh, many efforts that are happening with the best of intentions are actually getting in the way of getting people into housing. If you want to truly help, give your time or donation to one of the many local organizations whose only goal is to help the homeless men, women, and children in Kansas City. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Hi, I'm Forrest Decker. I'm the Superintendent of Parks for Kansas City, Missouri. We, uh, over the past couple of years, we've had a growing population of resident geese staying in Kansas City. Uh, this seemed to be concentrated in the plaza area. Uh, seems to be where the worst of them are at this point. So this year we decided to hire a uh, private company called Geese Police to, on a trial basis to try to keep them out of a couple key areas in the plaza. Uh, primarily uh, around the J.C. Nichols Fountain in Mill Creek Park and at the Spirit of Freedom Fountain uh, on Brush Creek. Hi, I'm Dave Burke. I'm the Area Superintendent for the Central Region Maintenance District. Um, here to talk a little bit about the, the goose problem we've been having at uh, Mill Creek Park and at Freedom Fountain. Uh, we've undertaken uh, uh, an opportunity with the geese police to rid the, these two areas of the geese uh, because they pose a oh a semi health hazard because of the excrement and the large amounts that they are leaving oh, around the, the basins of the fountains as well as on the sidewalks. Um, it has become a a, a maintenance uh, 
headache. Uh, we've, we've had to have people down there daily um, power washing the sidewalks and the fountain basins and so that uh, unfortunately takes away from other activities we wanted to do. The thing of J.C. Nichols Fountain, it's, it's one of the more photographed um, fountains in the city um, and with the, the amount of goose excrement that you know it's, it's really caused a, 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 an eyesore for, for those endeavors and, and we've had you know several citizens calling and, and asking what we were doing about it and so we like I said we've undertaken this East police to, to chase them away from those locations. My name is Dave Swickard and I'm the owner of Geese Police of Kansas City. We use highly trained border collies to uh, keep geese off commercial and residential properties. We go to the sites every day, seven days a week, multiple times during the first two weeks of service so that our dogs are perceived as more than one predator threat. What's unique about Border Collies versus any other dog is they have a wolf-like glance or the eye, they call it in the sheep world, and that stalking me mechanism that the geese uh, see from the Border Collies uh, think that they're getting a predator threat they currently don't have. So our success uh, by harassing the geese in such a manner that's environmentally safe and friendly, all of our dogs are trained never to touch, harm, or injure a goose in any way. Their, their, eye, their tails down, their heads uh, down, and the tail shot between the legs. And so we're emulating that of a coyote or a fox or uh, any predator that would be to a geese. The average goose leave the, leaves behind uh, a pound to a pound and a half of excrement per day, per bird. So what we're doing is help alleviating that. When you add 50, 60 birds around the fountain or in a park, uh, that can add up pretty quickly. So, so far it seems to be working pretty well and we will continue this process on a trial basis and see if it's something we want to continue in the future. Have an idea to improve Kansas City? Mayor Sly James and other city leaders want to know. Residents and neighborhood groups may submit project ideas affecting public health, sustainability, technology, crime prevention, and arts and culture. The best ideas will be featured during the city's first ever Ideas Fair. The Ideas Fair is October 26th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Central Library. Act fast, though. Residents must submit their ideas at kcmayor.org by September 23rd. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org. Just scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.